Mediums Those who can mediate communication between those of the living and spirits of the dead. Do you believe? Grab a blanket, turn off your lights, and let's hear three stories from the beyond. My wife's brief experience with the medium. I consider myself more of a believer than a skeptic, but some things I just won't buy. My wife is a complete skeptic on the other hand, so with that being said, a few days ago at my wife's work, a woman who claimed to be a medium was talking to my wife's sister, who my wife works with. Out of nowhere, as my wife is walking by the two of them, the medium stops her in her tracks and says, I'm getting a Patrick from you. My wife is shocked in disbelief. Patrick was the name of her six-month-old son who passed away due to a birth defect about 11 years ago. I was not with her at the time, and I don't ask her about him. She does not like to talk about it. This month was the month that he passed away. The medium then told my wife, Your mother's mother is cradling him in her arms. The grandmother being deceased might be an easy guess or a coincidence, but getting her son's name right away was was very interesting. Mind you, this woman was not getting paid for this or soliciting work. She just claimed to have an extremely strong feeling as my wife walked by. Needless to say, my wife is not as much of a skeptic anymore. And she was actually a little more at peace about the subject than usual. Update. I'm blown away by everyone's stories and opinions on this matter. Normally when I think of mediums and psychics, I think of the scammer from Pee Wee's Big Adventure. With that being said, this has been a very interesting event in our lives. I don't think I would go and willingly pay money to have a reading done though. The girl. Sometimes you just hit upon a person who can hear or see or channel these things. For example, I had an experience during my sophomore year in college with a, I don't know what to label her as, perhaps, an unwilling channeler. It was around mid-semester, me and a couple of friends of mine were walking around the central campus union trying to find a place to sit but the entire place was jam-packed with tour groups and, and, and other things, so there was very few seats. We didn't want to go to the library, it was just too cold. Eventually we did find a spot, though it was already occupied by a girl. But we thought, ah oh, hell, why not? We go up to her and ask her if she would mind if we sit with her since no other seats were open. She begrudgingly said yes, while we were sitting there, talking about her history class, we also try and bring her into the conversation. Her name was Alyssa, and she was part of a prospective student tour group that was sitting a few tables away. We asked her why she was sitting on her own, and she just kind of shrugged and said, no reason. A few minutes later, we finally get her to open up a little and she's laughing at our stories about our half-baked history professor, when suddenly she turns to me and says, Your Nana says, Hey, Fidget. Dead silence. She's blushing up a storm, and looking really embarrassed. Like she wants to just melt into the floor, my friends are looking her at her oddly, and I'm just dumbfounded. There was no way for her to know that my grandmother, who I call Nana by the way, and who died when I was in middle school nicknamed me Fidget. Suddenly, I was speechless. She starts apologizing and moves to get up. Finally, I get a semblance of a brain back and tell her it's okay. 
My best friend is already trying her best to dispel the awkwardness with scathing humorous comments about girls who wear leggings at, as pants. But Alyssa's already mortified, and we can tell she just wants to leave. Not two to three minutes later, Alyssa's mom and sister comes over to tell her that the tour group is about to leave. We said our goodbyes and tell her that we hope she comes back to her college so that we can see her again. She shrugs, waves, and is gone. Have never seen her again. I didn't know what to think at the time. Truthfully, I was, a I was a firm skeptic, and in some ways I still am, but that, that was just spot on. None of my friends at that point knew that about me. Couldn't have said a word about it. I certainly hadn't said anything personal about myself except my name. And the girl was from out of state, so there was no way she was an old acquaintance that might have known me during the time my grandmother was alive. Her comment was completely out of the blue. Also, something else that stuck with me and made me believe her was her reactions. Right before she said it, she got this look on her face like she was trying to figure out a really complex math problem. She was also itching at her earlobe and bumping the table with her foot like she was nervous. Then, like she couldn't contain it anymore, she turned to me and, completely serious, told it to me. Afterwards, her cheeks turned ten shades of red, and she wouldn't look at any of us like she had said something racist. I feel so bad for her, but honestly didn't know what to say to make her feel better. In retrospect, maybe a simple thank you. Truly. I believe that there are some people out there who can see and hear and channel spirits, and some who are just fake. But because of my experience, I will never deny that there isn't a possibility of something else out there. Skeptic I'm a believer, but also hugely skeptical about most psychic and mediums because I know a hell of a lot of them are scammers. Recently, I was down on my luck and figured why not. So I reached out to a medium who was supposedly very popular in my area. She came to my house and the price was steep and almost immediately, I regretted it, thinking for sure she was just going to tell me a bunch of general shit that could work for anybody. First thing she tells me in my cards is that my grandmother is very sick with cancer and doesn't have much time. So I shrugged it off because my grandmother is like the healthiest person in the whole family. She goes ahead and does a health spread from there and tells me my brother has a minor cold, a sore throat, and my mother needs to stop taking the supplements she recently started taking because there's gonna have a lot of negative effects with her prescription. Then tells me I have a blood disorder and to get it looked at. She said a lot more, but after she left, I called my mother to check out some of her readings. First thing out of my mother's mouth, right after I say hello, is that my grandma has cancer and it's bad. I ask her about my brother, and he in fact has a sore throat, and then I, being really freaked out, I asked her about the pills she might, she might have started taking. Upon her going to the doctor, she found out, in combination with her prescription, it can cause ulcers. So then obviously I went to the doctor, and found out. I'm anemic. Needless to say, she freaked me out. <laughs> 